When I solve f equals ma problems, I do the same three steps every time. Step one, draw a sketch illustrating what's happening in the problem. Step two, draw what's called a free body diagram. I'll show one of those in a minute. And step three, apply Newton's second law. Sum of forces equals mass times acceleration. A very typical situation might involve a block of some mass m on a surface. Maybe there's a tension pulling on the block at some angle theta, and perhaps there's other forces such as friction acting on it. That could serve as the sketch in step one. Step two tells us to draw a free body diagram. To do that, we represent our object as a dot because its size and shape doesn't matter, and we draw every force that acts on the object, only forces but it's important to get every force. First, we notice that there is weight acting on it. That is always straight down. There's a normal force from the surface that it's resting on, and that is perpendicular to the surface. There's the tension force at the angle theta, and there's friction in this direction. We'll label this with an xy coordinate system as usual. That's step two. It's important to get every force that acts on the object, and it's also important to put nothing but forces on here. Nothing to do with the motion or the acceleration, just the forces. Now we come to step three, which tells us to apply Newton's second law. We notice first that this is a vector equation, so we can write its components, the sum of forces along x, as mass times acceleration along x, and the same thing in the y direction. The forces summed in some direction tell you the mass times acceleration in that direction. We will read the left-hand side of Newton's second law, the sum of the forces, straight off of our free body diagram. That's why it's important to only include forces on it. When we look at the horizontal component, the x component, I see two forces. There's the component of tension in the positive x direction, and there's friction in the negative x direction. So we add those together, and we get t sub x, which would be t cosine theta, minus the friction force, and that equals mass times acceleration in the x direction. Doing the same thing in the vertical or the y direction, we see there are three forces. There's the normal force, there's a component of the tension, T sub y, and there is the weight that is going straight down. We add those together and we get n plus T sine theta, the y component of tension, minus the weight, mg, and those sum to the right-hand side of Newton's second law, mass times acceleration in the vertical direction. And from here, you could substitute the values that you know and solve for the quantity that you're asked to find.